view, but if politics is, as Aristotle said, the way we organize our lives together, surely it is odd to uh, assert that a religious individual or a religious community should have no say in how we organize our lives together. I would argue that precisely the opposite is true. It is in the nature of most religions, not all, that belief yields policy prescriptions. Obviously, there are limits to this level of religious freedom, and that is where a very important conversation should be had. But I don't want to have that conversation now. We can talk about it later if you like. Here's my point. American diplomacy does not think in this fashion about religious liberty. What we have done for the past 10 years is oppose religious persecution, and as I say, we've not been very effective at doing that. We have annually come up with a list of the worst persecutors in the world, and we, it's the so-called countries of particular concern, it comes out, or should come out every fall, sometimes it's delayed. And this is the, seems to be the sole content of our policy. The International Religious Freedom Act mandates this, this is why it, it happens, it's required by law. It permits other things, more positive ways of approaching this issue, but it does not mandate them. And as a result, this issue and its operation and implementation have been bureaucratically and functionally isolated, compartmentalized inside the State Department. And they have nothing to do with American foreign policy unless the bishop is about to get his head cut off or the pastor has been thrown into jail and then the Office of Religious Freedom is pulled into action. But if you want to talk about our policy toward Islam or Egypt or Saudi Arabia or China or Russia or India, it does not occur to anyone in these highly religious societies that the Office of Religious Freedom ought to be involved and therefore it isn't for the most part. How can we change this? In three areas, I, as I mentioned before, I think are critical. There are many things to be said here, but let me, uh, again, painting with very broad brushes. Democracy promotion. Again, a little bit of a controversial issue. It's hard for me, at least, to tell at this point what the Obama administration is going to do with this issue. Uh, I get the sense that over the first few months, it's trying very hard to prove to the world that President Obama is not George W. Bush. Uh, I think he's done a pretty good job of that, but George W. Bush, some on, in the Democratic Party would argue, have sort of spoiled democracy promotion with the invasion of Iraq, with the notion of the foreign strategy of freedom, the freedom agenda. The Obama administration doesn't really want to associate itself with this, but I guarantee you, at some point, this administration, like all of its predecessors, going back at least to Ronald Reagan and certainly arguably with Jimmy Carter in a different way. But I, I point to Reagan because this is when the National Endowment for Democracy was created in the early 80s. It's good. This administration will have a democracy promotion strategy. If it involves religious freedom at its core in promoting democracy, it will be the first American administration to do this. It's extraordinary to me that the man who is arguably the most, one of the most religious uh, individuals in, in modern American history, George W. Bush, clearly cared deeply about religious liberty, spoke about it frequently, and yet did not have the policy tentacles from his own religious beliefs to the issue of religious freedom. So that religious freedom had very little part to play in the advancement of democracy under the Bush administration. Now Andrew Natsios is going to tell you, I hope, that while he was at USAID, lots of good things were done on the ground with respect to religion, engaging religious communities and great, engaging religious actors, and even perhaps with respect to religious freedom. But I think he will agree, we'll find out, that all of this was ad hoc. It was caused by people who were trying to solve the problem on the ground, and so in order to solve the problem, you've got to talk to the pastor or the imam or deal with the religious community that is in front of you, and they did it. But often they did it either without instructions for Washington, or in some cases against instructions from Washington, for whom engaging religious communities is thought to be either impolite or unconstitutional or just too damned hard. 